This is a practical investigation on omic and non-omic devices. The aim of this investigation is to explore the resistance properties of a resistor and a light globe. We will hook each of these devices up into a simple circuit and have a look at the potential difference across each device as well as the current flowing through each device. Using this data, we will use Ohm's law, V equals IR, to calculate the resistance of each device and use this to determine whether the devices are ohmic or non-ohmic devices. Now in this video, we will only be collecting each measurement once. However, in practice, we know that it's best to conduct each measurement multiple times and take an average. You can then use those measurements to analyze the error and uncertainty involved. Let's begin by running through the equipment you will need for the Ohm's Law Prac. You will need a power pack, you will need an ammeter, a voltmeter, a selection of wires, you'll also need a resistor and a light globe. So the aim of this prac is to investigate these two devices here, the resistor and the light globe. So what we need to do is put these devices in a simple circuit so that we can measure the current flowing through them and the potential difference across them. Once we look at these numbers, we can then look at the relationship between voltage and current. Let's start by looking at the resistor. So I'm going to hook the resistor up to the power pack using wires. So the simplest circuit you can make is simply two wires connected from the terminals of the power pack directly to the resistor. Now, in order to measure the current flowing through this circuit, the ammeter needs to be connected in series somewhere in this circuit. It doesn't matter where it's positioned. I'm going to insert it here before the resistor, but it wouldn't matter if you positioned it after the resistor. So I'm going to insert my ammeter in series into the circuit. This will allow us to measure the current flowing through the circuit. To measure the potential difference or the voltage across the resistor, we need to connect the voltmeter in parallel across the resistor. So we do that by connecting two wires directly from the voltmeter straight across to the, the ends of the resistor. So we have our series circuit with an ammeter and a resistor in series, and we have our voltmeter in parallel across the resistor. Now the first thing you'll notice is that when the power pack is turned off, or in other words, there are zero volts being supplied to the circuit, there should also be zero amps flowing through the circuit and also zero volts across the resistor. Now I'm going to start with the power pack set to two volts. When I turn that on, the first thing I should notice is that both needles move to the right. If you find that your needles move the wrong way, they move to the left, all that means is that you may have your terminals connected the wrong way around. So if you've connected your terminals the wrong way around, you will find that the needles move to the left instead of the right. And so what you need to do is just simply switch them over. So let's take our first reading. When the power pack is set to two volts, let's look at the potential difference across the resistor. So the voltage or the potential difference across the resistor is also reading approximately two volts. At this time, the current flowing through the circuit is approximately 0.3 amps. So we, you will need to put those results into the first row of your table We've got two volts being supplied by the power pack, two volts across the resistor, and 0.3 amps flowing through the circuit. Let's now increase the power from the power pack up to four volts. So the potential difference across the resistor has increased and it now reads approximately 3.5 volts. 
So the first thing you might notice here is that there's a difference between the voltage being supplied to the circuit and the voltage across the resistor. Should they be the same? And if they're not the same, why could they be different? At this time, the current going through the circuit is approximately 0.5 amps. So we've got four volts from the power pack, 3.5 volts across the resistor, and approximately 0.5 amps through the circuit. So that will be the second row in your table of results. Increasing the voltage from the power pack to six volts, we now have approximately five volts across the resistor from the voltmeter, and we have approximately 0.7 amps of current flowing through the circuit. And the last reading we're going to take is when we increase the power pack to eight volts, we find that the reading on the voltmeter is approximately seven volts, and the reading on the ammeter is approximately 0.9 amps. So now you've got all the data you need to put into your results table. For each setting on the power pack, so two, four, six, and eight volts, you can use Ohm's law, V equals IR, to calculate the resistance of the resistor at each setting. You will then need to plot a graph of current versus voltage to investigate the relationship between voltage and current for this particular device. So now we're going to repeat the experiment, but in this case, we're going to replace the resistor with a light globe. So we first of all need to unhook the resistor from the circuit. And in its place, we're going to put the light globe. So again, we just need to make sure that the ammeter is connected in series with the light globe and that the voltmeter is connected in parallel. So again, we should notice that when we're supplying zero volts to the circuit, we should see zero volts across the light globe and zero amps flowing through the circuit. Let's turn the power pack on. And the first setting is at two volts. So we're supplying two volts from the power pack. You'll notice that the light globe is glowing, which means we have current flowing through our circuit. The potential difference or the voltage